Welcome to the BCCSA's tutorial on how to use the student audit assignment. First of all, to begin, make sure you're using either a Mac or a Windows computer. This tutorial will cover both options. Microsoft Excel looks generally the same on either system, so don't worry if you're using one or the other. As noted, you do need Microsoft Excel installed on your computer in order to complete this assignment. This tutorial will show you how to do two things. First, how to navigate the document, and second, how to input information into the document. Before you can start navigating and inputting information into the audit document, you might have to enable content. To do this on Windows, simply click the Enable Editing button that is in the red circle on front of your screen right now. If you're using a Mac, this window will pop up when you open the document. Click Enable Macros. That's the bottom button right in front of you. You'll have to do this in order to use the document. First, let's start out with navigation. To navigate this document, simply click the tabs at the bottom of your screen. If you can't see the tabs, like here, you can't see all of them that are in the document, click the arrows at the bottom left of your screen. That way, the other tabs will be revealed. Once they're revealed, just simply click on them and you should be able to fill them out. You can also scroll up and down to access different parts of the page. Sometimes pages are longer than others, so it will require you to navigate and scroll in order to access different information and different areas to which you're going to fill things in. You can also navigate side to side by scrolling side to side or using the bar below. If you get lost in the document, just look at the bar below and it will show you where you are in the document. There's also a bar on the side that you can use to also to scroll. For most of the information that you're going to input into the document, all you have to do is select the box and then start typing. Once you start typing, the box will fill. Some boxes are highlighted in yellow to indicate that you must fill them out. Now that doesn't mean that boxes that are not yellow are not to be filled out. These are just important ones that we've highlighted as students tend to forget to fill them out. Sometimes boxes will have you just simply click yes or no to fill them out. Other times, like on the audit information page, you will have to type into the box in order to fill it out. Sometimes when you fill out certain cells, they'll fill out other cells and other tabs. So for example, if I put this date here in the actual audit start date, it'll also fill out my date in this tab here in the pre and post audit meetings. So keep in mind that this does occur in some instances. You can also change the size of certain boxes if they're too small for what you're going to put into them. So if we're looking in the elements part of the audit document, let's say I'm trying to type something in here that's too big. I have too much text that overflows the cell. I can simply click here and it'll reshape the cell so I can make it smaller and I can make it bigger. When you're awarding points, sometimes you have to select them. So for example, when you're in the elements here, you click yes, that'll award the points. Sometimes you have to go to different tabs in order to fill out the points or to award points in a certain part of the element. Typically this is reserved for points that require observation or interviews. So first, if I'm going to award points here, I need to make sure I'm filling this out. So we're doing 1.6 in this example here. See, 1.6 is selected. So to award points here, I've also I filled out 1.6 here for my worker interviews. I've also indicated that I've done observations here. Thus, points are awarded. As I've shown before, other times you simply just click yes, select yes in order to award points. So there's two ways to award points in the student audit document, uh, and this goes for the full audit document as well. Some of them require correlation between separate tabs, and some of them are just only selecting yes in one area. The interview summary form will also auto-populate. So depending on what you fill in, in your OMS Interviews tab, as well as your Workers Interviews tab, it'll be automatically inputted into the interview summary form. The points will be automatically calculated and deposited into the audit summary form, so you don't need to fill out anything here. It's affected by what you put in the elements, what you put in the interviews, and what you put in the observation summary. On this page, make sure you put the company name, your auditor name, the goal that your company is going to get for the next audit, as well as who it's reviewed by. These are highlighted in yellow to make sure you fill them out. There's also an instructions tab located within this document. 
If you're looking for information on the various types of interviewing techniques, what ratio you need to interview, or any other information like that, consult this page. It will be useful to you. Lastly, there's also a tab called Using the Electronic Audit. There's a lot of information here. Much of it is what we've covered already and more so in this video. So we do suggest consulting this if you have any questions. If not, feel free to email training at bccsa.ca for more clarification. Thanks for watching this tutorial. Good luck with your student audit assignment and take care. Bye-bye.